Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'll be doing something a little bit different again. I haven't reviewed a Switch in a very long time, but today we'll be reviewing the Boba U4 RGB switches. Got them in a nice bag right here. The rest of it is in a keyboard because I had to put it in to record a stock sound test. And we're also doing a tutorial on how I lube my switches, which is a very lazy way. It'll be a little bit different, but hope you stick around for it. Let's jump into the video. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and today we'll be reviewing the Gazoo Boba U4 RGB switches. They are a silent tactile switch, and unlike the silent Gateron Browns or the Alia switches, these actually have quite the bump to them. I will be lubing them because there are some things that I like and don't like about them, but we'll be going into a review of the switches first, a before sound test, an after sound test, and a how I lube my switches as well. Let's start with that before sound test of the Boba U4 switches. I put it on the Apple Maker GK68X because, well, we don't really have any good hot swaps right now. Can't wait for that GMMK Pro to come, and that will be sort of our hot swap stock sound test right now. And yes, I did insert some foam, some sound dampening, and I also modded the stabilizers, but you know, the keyboard only had so much potential to begin with. All right, the switches, RGB KB sent these out to me for review, and I said yes, because who doesn't like a nice silent tactile switch? As far as silent switches go, sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't like them, the mushy feel is, not my favorite, but you know, sometimes you don't want to bottom out everything and slam your fingers against the board. So I do appreciate them, but not 100% of the time. All right, so the Boba U4 switches. They have a white stem, they are five pin, there's a clear top housing, and there is quite a large spot for the RGB to shine through. And the bottom is a milky cream colored housing. And they are Cherry MX style, so you can use a Cherry MX switch opener to open them. They are available in two different forces, 62 grams or 68 grams. I got 100 of the 62 grams because sometimes my fingers need a nice rest, but they are both available online if you choose. The top is made of a clear polycarb, so great for RGB shine through. And they are five pin, you can clip them, but I don't really like clipping anything nowadays because you never know when you need five pin switches. So in the sound test before, as you heard, there's very little spring ping. In fact, from hearing distance, I would say that there's like no spring ping there at all. These are completely stock and unlubed, but we will be lubing them today and then doing a after sound test that you can hear as well. Timestamps are all down below, so check those out. The tactile bump is quite nice. There's no pre-travel at all. You pretty much hit that bump the moment you press on the switch and there's no post travel either. So it's just bump and that's it, bump, bump. In terms of the switch being in an actual board, when you hit the keycap in the wrong place, such as a corner or something, it feels sort of stuck. So in a way, the switch is trying to be a lot more tactile than it can. I even had a key where it wouldn't go back up, but that might've just been a defective switch. So they are very nice. The Tactility, I would say, is similar to a T1 switch, 
that's unlubed. And then the bottom out is quite quiet as well because as you know, there is a sound dampener material available right there. If you hit the switch from the side, there's definitely a lot more noise happening, but that's okay because I'm gonna be lubing pretty much everything, legs and rails included. I know technically you're not supposed to lube the legs because they're, they're gonna lose some of their tactility, but I prefer a more rounded bump, so that's my option. These switches are very nice, better than Gatteron Silent Browns, better than Alias for sure. Those barely have any tactility to them despite, you know, being called tactile switches, but they are silent, which is a plus. But onto how to lube, how I lube, not how to lube because not everyone lubes like this, not everybody. All right, so what do you need to lube a switch? You're going to need a switch opener, brushes, a clean workstation, a Ziploc bag to bag lube your springs, super lube, which I use to lube my springs because I'm cheap and I don't wanna use nice lube to lube the springs, tweezers, three different plastic containers or not, you know, if you wanna do it just on the mat, that's fine. I have a mat dedicated to lubing switches and you need lots of time because it could take a few hours depending on your experience and how lazy you are with it and things like that. This is probably gonna take me like 30 minutes. So what lube to use, it's pretty much all preference. We do have an article on like what lube to use as well as an in-depth tutorial on how to lube. I'm going to be using Tribosis 3203 and that's because I've had pretty good results lubing tactile switches with Tribosis 3203. I like lubing linear switches with 205G0 for that buttery niceness. And 3204, I've used before on linear switches, but I'm just not a huge fan of them. It's, it's like in between everything and it's sort of eh. So lube choice is up to preference, but I'll be using 3203 for these. All right, so you're gonna start by preparing your workstation. So I have my paper towels because things might get a little bit messy. I have my plastic bag so I can bag lube my springs. You're gonna need to open up your switches. These have a cherry style housing. So we're gonna use a cherry style switch opener. So you can see here, there's four legs here in a cherry style switch opener. The kale style switch opener has these two long legs and I do have some kale style switches here so I'll show you those. All right, so this is a kale style switch. It has these pretty long closures on the side of it. Put your switch on top of it and then push down. It should re pop the should pop the housing off. I don't know if I can do it not on the table. So you're gonna separate the top housing, which is this part, and that will go into one of your plastic containers or on the table in a pile, whatever you want. And then you have the stem here that will go into another pile. And then you have the spring, and you want the spring to go into the bag. And then the bottom housing goes into the last pile. So you're gonna have three piles and then one spring in the bag. All right, so we're just gonna open all these up. So that's the first step. Align the four different legs that you see. So there's one, two, three, and four. And there's four legs on this too. So just align those, push down until you hear a noise. Here we go. And then you just pop them open and you repeat pretty much. And that's the whole process of opening your switches. It's pretty slow. But anyways, I've got three piles here. One, two, and three. And let's just pretend I opened up all my switches already. Next step I'm gonna do is add some lube into this Ziploc bag and then we'll shake them around. That I prefer to use for bag lubing springs is the Super Lube and it's in this bag because it gets pretty messy and I 
absolutely hate getting it on my fingers. So, all right, so I'm gonna use like eight drops. It doesn't really matter because this stuff is super cheap, so. So I'll close the majority of it first. Leave this tiny hole open here and I'll just blow in it. So there's a pocket of air. Now we're just gonna shake it around. Ideally, there'd be like 60, 70 springs in here. So because there's five, there's just not much going on. All right, so my five springs are pretty adequately lubed in that corner here. There's some extra lube that you can see on the side of the bag and stuff too, but don't worry about that because it's pretty cheap lube. I know my method is unconventional and and sometimes this stuff needs a, a mix because they tend to separate. So, ugh, so slippery. So this is 3203, that's what I'll be using. And you wanna have a really small thin brush like so. Oh, also I wanted to teach you how to open a switch if you don't have a switch opener. So you want a flat head screwdriver like this. Now, this is better, so just gonna put that underneath and pop out a leg. Put your nails in there to, to keep it from closing back on you. And it can be a little bit painful. I just cut my nails, so this is not good. But you wanna open up all four legs, and there we go. So open switch, and you know, I already bag lube my spring, so I'll close this one back up. But that's how you would do it if you don't have one of these things, is just use a really small flat head screwdriver. And I've done this for a whole set before. It's, it's a terrible experience. So, small brush, really, really, really thin. Open this bad boy up. So it looks like there's been a little bit of separation. So I'm gonna do a little bit of mixing. Okay, so I like to use this to hold my switch. Some people use lubing stations, but I don't have one of those. So I'll set that down. And then I start with the bottom housing. So with the bottom housing, I'll get that area in the middle where the stem goes into. So I'll add lube in there. And then I get the rail on the sides too. Do a little bit there. And that's pretty much it for, for the bottom housing, the two side rails, and I like to do the middle. And then I place that on top of my switch opener, so it'll hold my switch in place. And then after that, I get one of those springs using a pair of tweezers. Any old tweezers will do. Grab your spring and place your spring. on your uh, bottom housing. So there it is. Pretty simple. And now you want your stem to put on top of that. So I'll put this back down. And now we're gonna lube the stem. So for the stem here, I like to get the sides and of course for tactile switches, you're not supposed to lube these little leg things, but I'm pretty lazy with it and I like the rounder bump, so I'm just gonna lube everything. And that way it'll be just easier for me to get through this faster without paying too much attention to what I'm doing. So I get that side, I get the other side. I get everything. I mean, this might as well go with me bag lubing my stems too, but I don't like how messy that gets. So then you're gonna put it back on. So you're gonna put it on with the legs of, of the stem facing the leaf, since that's how it's going to actuate, like so. And now for the top housing. So here's the top housing. And for the top housing, there's two sides in here as well that I like to get on the far side here and then on the other side so not the not the RGB 
not this axis, the RGB axis, but the sides. So I'll do that. It's not really easy to see with a with this camera. But anyways, got lube on that side, lube on that other side, and now we're gonna put it on. So the bottom of the switch has this RGB place here and the metal leaf on the other side. The, the big part on the top housing goes over the RGB side. And then you close it. Lubed. So yeah, there was definitely a loss of tactility there. It's a lot more round and it has less chances of getting stuck when you actuate, which that's why I pretty much lube everything pretty lazily. But that is it. And now we're just going to repeat that process. I know this camera is really not the best at picking this up. So that's why we have a full in-depth guide in the description box down below. And we really tried hard to take pictures for those. So check that out if you're confused or anything. And as for the amount of lube, you don't want to use too much. So that's why you so we just try and get rid of it by, by painting the edge here. So now we'll just do another one. And those are my five lube switches. So that's pretty much the whole process. So if you don't want to bag lube your springs, you can always brush a lube it like so. Of course, I think this uses a lot more lube, so it's not very convenient and it's gonna end up costing you a little bit more in the long run. So bag lubing is definitely a more efficient method. But anyways, that's pretty much the, the whole shindig. It's pretty much how I lube things. It's pretty boring, takes some time. I'm gonna go to my desk, lube pretty much all these switches that are in here. And this these switches are probably gonna go in my Maha build or the other switches I have. I'm not sure yet, but I'm gonna do all that, record and after sound test and which you can hear right now. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're good switches. They are fairly silent. They are tactile. And I do really like them after they're lubed. If you don't lube the legs, they'll still sustain their tactile bump quite well. But I like to lube the legs and get a more rounded bump, similar to the Halo Clears. And that just feels more pleasant for me. But 
a sound relatively nice and silent. I'm back. I lubed all the switches, all 100 of them, of the Boba U4s. They're in the bag now because I'm pretty much done with them for the time being. But these are going in my Maha build or Maja, I don't know. But it's a sort of an Alice layout, 65%. Can't wait to build that when I have my stabilizers. And I gotta say, I do like them a lot. Initially, I thought they weren't going in my build because the bump was sort of too much and I was hitting corners and it's kept feeling very stuck. But after the lube, it's wonderfully round, just like how I like it. More aggressive than MX Browns, more aggressive than Halo Clears, but I would say less tactile than the Holy Pandas and the Glorious Pandas, but still very good. And I can't wait to have a silent switch. So I did replace the space bar with a Cherry MX Silent Red. And that's because a tactile switch on the space bar just wasn't sounding very good. It kept being very rattly. But after I switched it to a silent linear switch, it sounded a whole lot better. So I am in the living room right now. It's looking a little bit different in here, but I, the studio's being used right now for the time being. That's pretty much all I have to say about these Boba U4 switches. I would recommend that you get them. They're really nice, especially if you want a silent switch that is tactile at the same time. They're probably one of the best ones that I've used so far. I have a full set of alias that I thought I was gonna put into something, but the bump on that is just too weak for my preferences and I haven't even lubed them yet. I'm scared to lube them because I think they'll just lose all the tactility and everything will just ugh, be, be not good. Now, if you're looking for a silent tactile, these are definitely worth a shot. They're pretty affordable as well. I got them off RGB KB, so I'll link that down below if you want to check that out. I'm sure there's a ton of other places you can get them as well. But yeah, I hope this video was a little bit helpful. I know my lubing preferences are a little bit different than what other people like. A lot of people like the heavy tactility, the sharp bump but i'm more of a round bump person and i prefer more lube than less lube so it's all up to preference uh, i'm not going to judge you if you like something different uh, it's whatever but that's it for the video if you do want to check out the how to lube guide and what lube to switch what lube to pick for whatever switch our discord is super helpful in advising and they have a ton of different experiences so link that down below as well as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.